Hello, oh, this is Haka Devine, and today we are about to tumble around on r slash tumblers again, just because I can't get enough of this subreddit. I'm sorry. I'm sure I'll eventually return to SCP reading or something similar or again. Let's. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get into this. <sighs> Animated fantasy films just don't make fricked up evil castles like they used to. I mean, just look at that. That is. What the heck? That's awesome. King's ha King Haggard's Castle from the Last Unicorn, the Horn King's Castle from the Black Cauldron, and Eleven's Castle from the Sleeping Beauty. Yeah, um, I guess. I guess um, the millennials are killing the <laughs> really fricked up castle industry or something. I don't know. <sighs> Hi, I'm Uninspired Fancy Writer, and here's my list of races. Elves who are all blonde haired and blue eyed and unquestionably superior to everyone. Shifty traders from the desert with a weird accent. Huge, in inherently thre threatening green or black orcs, who are also the only race with dreadlocks, but never mind that. Incredibly greedy and money obsessed dwarves who lost their homeland or otherwise have large numbers of their race in the diaspora. Humans, but all based on romanticized depictions of European cultures. My favorite, the matriarchy that's pure, a freaking, an an evil head full of backstar having I don't even want to know. Just toothbrushes, electric, acoustic. I woke up in a cold sweat at four in the morning just to draw this for you all. I hope you find it as important as I did. <laughs> Could you imagine? We blindfolded 15 homophobes and asked them to hit pinatas with a stick. The pinatas were actually deadly Asian and ginormous nests. What happens next will warm your heart. This is disgusting bigotry against Christians at its finest. I love the part where this post never mentioned Christians, but you saw the word homophobe and jumped to your own defense anyways. Self burns. Those are rare. <laughs> <sighs> Why do I keep laughing at the thought of a female Spider-Man, Spider-Girl, Spider-Woman getting caught without her mask on, and the dude who catches her just goes on a rant about fake geek girls and how their costume isn't even accurate, oh my god, and Comic-Con was last week, and her secret identity is saved because some dude bro in a Batman t-shirt thinks he's hot a uh, crap. That would happen too. You know it would happen. And yes, I gave him a, a form of a neckbeard voice. It sucked, and I know I'm not good at those sorts of voices. Oh, dear lord. This is a long one. <sighs> I 
Do y'all know about Frederick Thomas? He is a French parasitologist who heard a story about crickets in New Zealand leaping into the water, even though they can't swim, and immediately speculated that suicidal behavior was related to behavior or manipulation from an internal parasite. This is before neuroparasitology was a field at all, before people really put much stock into parasites' abilities to control animal behavior. Thomas was certain that and studying these crickets would be a huge priority for the scientific world, given the implications of a, a parasite controlling an animal's actions in such an insidious way. Unfortunately, absolutely nobody would fund Tom is is his expedition into study the crickets, and its grants were all declined. In a wild move that showcases the balls to with a wall near insanity level passion of a biologist, Thomas declared a hunger strike and wrote a letter to the president of France saying he would not eat until someone took the matter seriously and fund his, his study on the suicidal crickets. I feel like those of us in research can at least use a little bit understand his, his impulse. Well, the French government actually got Thomas' message and he looked out of it at the negative publicity that could arise from a crazy worm scientist and is starving to death. So they sent some government bigwigs to the university to pressure Thomas and his department heads into calling an end to the hunger strike. In the flurry of attention that resulted from this, a Swiss bonaire heard about Thomas's plight and offered to partially fund the study. The French government was happy to get rid of Thomas and contributed at funding as well so that Thomas could head to New Zealand to study his suicidal crickets. He was right about the parasite it's causing behavior. The hunger strike debacle is not even the wildest part of the story. I love biology so much. What's the wildest? You can't leave us hanging like this. Okay, so get this. After all that, Frederick Thomas gets everything together and flies halfway across the world to New Zealand, and he can't find the crickets. I mean, he finds some, but apparently this species of cricket is really hard to track, and as a result, Thomas' team cannot capture enough to uh, yield significant studies for their, I mean, significant results for their study. Thomas was forced to abandon the project and leave New Zealand, but before he did, he sent a photo of a worm emerging from a cricket back to his colleagues in France. Naturally, the photo was posted in the university break room. While the photo was there, it was somehow seen by one of the scientist's cousins who worked cleaning poles. In a bizarre twist, the cousin recognized the worm. He claimed to see them all the time in the pool he cleaned for a local result, but it also said that he had observed crickets jumping into the pool at night. By this time, Thomas was back in France, but he was highly skeptical that the pool cleaning's information was correct. He gave the guy a jar and asked him to bring some samples of the worm, thinking he'd never hear from him again. And well, sure enough, about a week later, Thomas received a jar that was chock full of worms. Specifically, the species is Paragordius aspidatus, which are parasitic horse hair worms, and exactly what Thomas had desperately been trying to find inside his crickets in New Zealand. He had traveled halfway across the world just to realize that the parasite he wished to study could be found at a hotel about an hour from his house. Thomas's wife was lied when he informed her or he booked a surprise giveaway out of luxury result, or it, but of course she didn't know this trip was actually a brain parasite a reconnaissance its mission. Thomas spent end time by the pool at night making sure he saw crickets crawling to the red eyes edge and hopping in by one on, one by one. Thomas's colleagues were able to use the location to find thriving pro population of horsehair worms to study. The experiments confirmed that the worms were manipulating insect brains in front of their life cycle, and the result of these studies were eventually published and did or in all nature. Thank the Lord we have people who aren't normal. Else we would never know anything about the world. Okay, so naturally, I had to hunt down and read the nature paper upon seeing this post. Scratching around uh, on yield this brief communication. Not full paper, alas, but it's still as good as I hoped. Abstract. As persons in their living have that, parasites should be vulnerable to destruction by the predators of their hosts. But we show here that the parasite at Guardian Worm 
and Paragordia is right. Icuspidatus is able to escape Donald from its insect host after ingested by a fish or a frog, but also from the digestive tract of the predator. This remarkable tactic it enables the worm to continue its life cycle. I mean, just look at this abstract alone. As persons of their living habitat is an absolute banger opening in line by novel standards. So for a scientific paper, 10 out of 10 intrigue and drama, while also managing to be straightforward and accurate, as good science writing should, would be. The rest is similarly solid, transparent writing, but you can still feel the enthusiasm just radiating off it. As for the rest, this induced suicide of crickets influenced by the by Gordon Worms is one of the best known examples of parasite emulation of host behavior. Adult Gordian worms are free living in the water where they made as a nod mass of multiple individuals. A word is for the host occurs after crickets enters the water. For movie see is so much information. It might take as long as 10 minutes and so to the size of the worm. During this time, the cricket is active at the surface and attractive to aquatic predators such as fish and frogs. Death of the worms would be expected to result from generalist predation upon the host of the stage unless the parasites were capable of an anti predator response. <sighs> this guy made sure to include multiple supplementary videos of the worm slithering out of not just a cricket, but also a frog and a trout. You know, just for your viewing pleasure. It's brilliant. It's all brilliant. Here's the link. I'm not going to have that in the description. I'm sorry. Despite this being nature, I was able to access a full text PDF of this one with the unpaywall extension, which I highly recommend. I don't know what unpaywall extension is. But anyway, amazing posts. We're going to continue. <laughs> Literally slashing tabs, I love that. Anyway. Me, not old. Started using a cane when I started having balance issues because that's what canes are for. Old people, waving back and forth like a tree in the wind, grabbing onto everything, onto everyone and everything around them to keep from falling, risk falling and breaking hip every second they're on their feet, refuse to use, the, use a cane because it would be giving up. I need y'all to know that the person I wrote this about did in fact eventually fall, broke two vertebrae and ended up spending three months in the, a hospital in the middle of a pandemic. So anyway, if you need a mobility aid, use mobility aid. Pretty much. I mean, I had to use a cane when I was nine. <laughs> Movie traits that will never get old to me. That thing happens, plus two people exchanging money in the back. Fourth wall breaking. Give up all your weapons and that one guy that spends the entire evening taking his weights worth out of, out of his pockets. A terribly loud crash. Meowing or car sirens heard off screen. Alternatively, a terribly loud crash and the character is going, Oops, and it was casual voice. Frick you! Well, if you insist. Alternatively, alternatively, terribly loud crash with sirens and cat screeching. The person off camera, I'm okay. <laughs> I have seen all of these. Just heard the most beautiful sentence at work. A Hogwarts house? What the heck is that? Yeah, but I was never good. You, you were just nine. I mean, Harry Potter was never good. You were just nine. Stop giving turfs money. Anyway. <sighs> you can end one of these forever. Which do you pick? Cringe culture, call-out culture, or cancel culture? Hmm. 
it's cringe culture where you call things cringe or is it things that are cringe because I'm all for or ending a in calling thing calling in niche interests cringe altogether. Anyway, culture. Fair enough. Frick it, I guess culture is over now. How long does someone have to be dead before it's considered archaeology instead of grave robbing? You see my grandma's been that's like twenty eighteen. Is it so grave robbing? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> As an archaeologist, I find this a very awkward question. Answer the question, Grave Robber. I love how, oh, on Tumblr, you can have the most hilarious response be from someone with the name like Witch with a Dick. I love that. <laughs> <sighs> Don't let anyone tell you that your weak point has to be an enormous flashing crystal. You are also valid if your weak point is the sigil binding you to this plane. A series of switches throughout your arena which cause something heavy to fall on you when activate it in, in the correct sequence. A grotesquely exposed beating heart. Your own special attack reflected back at you, possibly fo following a variable number of return volleys. Sunlight from a conveniently located window. A mask-like and dragonous human face whose jaw and hinges like a snake's to shoot a giant laser. The melody of a childhood lullaby. An annoyingly evasive drone or companion creature which houses the true source of your mortality. Your comically tiny head. Remember, there's no wrong way to be a final boss. We're all in this together. Not just the final boss. There's no wrong way to be a boss. And I feel like I've seen these weak points in a lot of Zelda games. <laughs> For the most part in Zelda games, the weak points I see are glowing eyes. Especially in the um, 3D Majora's Mask game. Anyway. Continue. Poor little parrot killed by the high temperatures. Ah, no, it's a corn. <laughs> As my friend Julian puts it, only half wakingly, God bless me by making me a, 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 a trans. I'm not saying dress because it's actually an outdated term for trans people. Actually, I will say it. God bless me by making me transsexual for the same reason God made wheat but not bread, and fruit but not wine, so humanity might share in the art act of creation. From something that uh, may shock and discredit you, Daniel Olavery. Reading this book right now, and it has several dozen moods. Honestly, I'm an atheist, but I love this because it makes it so that even the freaking religion cannot be a use, cannot be a verifiably use against trans people anymore. Your religion is not an excuse to be a piece of crap. Sorry. Be a decent person. That's the least you can do. You live on, 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 on the same planet as me, after all. Just heard my brother shout out over his gaming headset. And who the H-E double frick are you? <laughs> Since frogs can breathe through their skin, Kara could survive with his head inserted in Miss Piggy's 
whatever indefinitely, as long as his body was submerged underwater. What the fuck? What the heck? They broke him! The drugs broke him! Freaking shower the autism driven beyond words! The incapacity for articulated complaints! His gas has been flabbered! What the hell did I just read? I'm trying so hard not to swear, but what in the frick? Anyone else ever think back to how you were taught as a kid that it's one of your weird quirks that you get super mad when someone goes through your stuff? And only later on realize that a desire for privacy is a completely normal human trait to have? And the reason you were always the only one to throw a fit about someone sleeping through your sh or crap is because you were the only one whose personal private property wasn't considered private property? Yeah. Now that I think of it, that does kind of piss me off. Wonderful. Let's continue. <laughs> With a dentist punk, uh, 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 but assistant ain't doing their job, their one job with the suction tube. So you're just as so you you're just there like. Wah. Uh, out of all the e captions that could have been put with that picture, I'm so glad it's that one. Can you imagine if Donald Trump became president? There'd be like a new bubonic plague and he'd be like, I don't know, drink bleach about it. Throw back to when I took acid for the first time in 2013 and I predicted the events of 2020 like the freaking Oracle of Delphi. They added, this is the original post. How could dog meat readers sell puppies for over $1,000? Do these puppies crap gold? Do these puppies fight crime? Can they play the banjo? No, they're freaking infant and dogs that poop on your things and love you. OMG, how could dog puppies... Link to read blog of the original post. This blog is from 2013. Yeah, OP bloggers for calling him out on this reblog. I can't reblog or reply to this anymore and my reblog won't show up in the notes. But reblog this for me. And then your reblog will show up in the notes. I thought maybe they were just trying to be funny and then and care if people knew they were lying, but they're like legitimately trying to convince people it's true. Sketchy of other behavior. Especially since they're promoting their cut of you on their, their Patreon. They were they were actually trying to get a money for get actual money for lying. Two huge bouncers in suits pick up OP by their uh, 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 and hurl them out of the Temple of Apollo. OP is going to be put under the Cassandra curse for this. <laughs> what the heck? Could you imagine lying about being in basically an oracle? Oh my goodness. I've been wanting to read this forever. This this is the most unhinged, angry thing I have ever read, and I love it so much. <laughs> Dear guy who just made my burrito. Have you ever been to Earth? 
On Earth, we use the tur the word burrito to describe a tortilla filled with things you eat. Pretty simple stuff, and I'm surprised you at least got that part right. My burrito was, in fact, filled with food. In this, you and I agree and are friends. But this is also where my lifelong hatred begins for you and anyone else whose brain has been repeatedly scrubbed with the same mixture of bleach and pop rocks as yours had. As. Cause that should have killed you, but left you around long enough to do what you did to me today. Let me explain. You're an idiot. Let me further explain. Burritos are eaten from one end to the other. So that means when you assemble all a burrito with mother with mother freaking zones of ingredients going in that direction, you create a disgusting experience for the burrito's end user. When you make a burrito, you should put the the ingredients in layers, lengthwise. That way, every bite uh, has at least a freaking chance of getting at least two types of ingredients. There is little chance of becoming almost hopelessly trapped in a gosh darn lateral oh, cavern. Have you ever eaten one of the things you make all freaking day? You should try one. They're pretty a good when you are not willing yourself to really. A, a freaking empire of sour cream only to end up in lettuce country. When you eat a burrito, you don't stand up it up and bite down on it length like eyes like a freaking ran car. Humans can't usually dislocate their jaws, and I'm not a freaking pelican. But you must think that's how it's done, since that would be the only Freaking way to take a bite of your crap trusty and have it taste like a burrito. And guess what else, player? You probably can't guess anything because as I'm pretty sure you're just a mob with a hat on it that fell over and spilled some crap into the tea. But just in case, here's what. Humans don't eat, eat burritos like freaking cordon on the, on the cob. Like a freaking typewriter from one end to the other. Or, or a little at a time, and a ding next line. But today, I wish I had tried that, because at least then I would be able to eat some rice, then beans, then be all like, hey beans, I'll be right back, just going over here for it to the guacamole for a second. Nope. My experience was more like, hey beans, it's going to be, it's just going to be you and I for a minute, until I can freaking excavate the rice from beneath you. But by then, you'll be a fading memory. Oh, hey, I was wrong. I'm in the freaking Jesus sphere. There, now, Grace must be next. I hope it's not another freaking salsa pocket. You built this like a freaking pack of lifesavers. And don't even freaking think I'm about to open this crap and re engineer your nonsense 90 degrees. I already put a hole in it with my freaking mouth. Yeah, that's how I discovered your, a freaking and, and and you freaking suck at looking at things. I'm not going to do freaking tortilla origami to get this crap back together, only to end up with a burrito that's been shot in the gut and is bleeding your ineptitude. What's that? I should I'd ask you to mix it up first next time. Is this Jamba Juice? I don't want to drink my freaking burrito through a bendy straw, and I don't want a pile of burrito soup in a flour can. I just want a burrito. In conclusion, you are you're the worst thing that has ever happened to the universe. You owe everyone everywhere an apology for this burrito abomination. I hope your babies look like monkeys. Update for everyone who said just eat with a fork. A freaking fork? I didn't order the freaking and, and co burrito salad. If anyone had ever hand me burrito with a fork, they would I'd be wearing a brand new a burrito hat from my fall collection 10 seconds later. That's like buying a car and having them hand you a freaking wrench with the keys. Like, yeah, we know this it, it, trick is going to explode and be spread across eight lanes as soon as you hit the gas. But crap, we gave you a wrench, so be cool. Jesus already gave me two burrito forks, one at the end of each arm. They're called freaking hands. 
A fork. My god, I haven't cried since I was six. But I'm freaking sobbing now. People eat Frios with forks. God is sorry he made us. Holy crap. I love how this one person goes on a tirade about how stupid this other person is for making the burrito they did. <sighs> okay, bad jokes by Jeff. Let's go. A nun walk, walks into a, a mother superior's office and plunks down into a chair. She lets out a sigh, heavy with frustration. What troubles you, sister? Asked the mother superior. I thought this was the day you spent with your family. It was, sighed the sister, and I went to play goth with my brother. We try to play goth off as often as we can. You know I was quite a talented at golfer before I, be, before I devoted my life to Christ. I seem to recall that when the mother superior agreed. So it's like your day of recreation was not relaxing. Far from it, <laughs> snoring the sister. In fact, I took the Lord's name in vain today. Goodness, sister, gasped the mother, or superior astonished. You must tell me all about it. Well, we were on the fifth tee, and this hole is a monster, mother. Five forty yard for five, with a nest dog leg right and a hidden green. I hit the drive of my life, the sweetest thing I have ever made. And it's flying straight and, and true, right along the line I wanted, and it hits a... Oh, I have to open this image in a new tab. That's sad. Right along the line one, and it hits a bird in mid flight. Oh my! Commiserated the mother superior. How unfortunate, but surely that didn't make you blaspheme, in, in sister. No, what? No, that wasn't it, admitted the sister. While I was still trying to fathom what had happened, this squirrel runs out of the woods, grabs my ball, and runs off down the fairway. Oh, that would have made me blaspheme him. Empathize, I said, Mother Superior. But I didn't, and I was so proud of myself. And while I was pondering whether this was a sign from God, this hawk swoops out of the sky and grabs the squirrel and flies off with my ball still clutching its pa in his paws. So that's when you cursed the Mother Superior with no. Well, nope, that wasn't it. It either, because as the hawk started to fly, outside the squirrel started struggling, and the hawk dropped him right there on the green, and the ball popped out of his paws and rolled to, rolled to about 18 inches from the cup. The mother superior sat back in her chair, folded her arms across her chest, and fixed this thing with a baleful of Sarah and said, You missed a freaking putt, didn't you? <laughs> Bad jokes by Jeff is always a good uh, 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 advice to get some good jokes, ironically enough. My Roomba is scared of thunderstorms. 
I was sitting at my desk just a few minutes ago drawing, and a really loud crack of thunder went off. No power switches or anything, just the thunder, and my Roomba fled from its dock and started spinning in circles. I currently now have an active Roomba sitting quietly on my lap. Aww, that's so cute. Humans will pack bond with anything. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, you <laughs> remember the companion cube from Portal? <laughs> oh, that was good. Anyway, thirty-five minutes. I think that's enough template for one day. If you enjoyed watching me tumble around the internet, and most likely you have way more fun than I should be having, then please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next video where I do something. I don't know what, it doesn't really matter. Maybe more Tumblr because I just freaking love this subreddit. It's so much fun to read. Maybe I'll do a new subreddit. Maybe you guys can suggest a subreddit in the sub in, in the in the comments. I don't know. Maybe you have questions for me. Maybe I can answer them. Who knows? Maybe you want to know more about who the heck Haku is. And why the heck I am so freaking obsessed with these Tumblr memes. And so you guys are funny. And they're really, really fun to read. <laughs> if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you next time. Goodbye!